Hi there, my name is Cam, and in this video, we're going to solve a problem in Marketing Cloud that I'm sure many of you have come across. How do you find the SQL activities and automations that are modifying a data extension? So let's say you have a data extension, such as your primary customer or subscriber's data extension, and you want to find out what SQL activities and automations are modifying it. Well, you could go into Automation Studio and under Query Activities, look at the Targeted Data Extension column to identify which activities are targeting your data extension. And if you have a new or relatively small instance of Marketing Cloud, that won't be a problem. But if your Marketing Cloud's a few years old, you may have tens or even hundreds of query activities in Automation Studio. So it's a faster way to find which activities are modifying a data extension. Well, today I'm going to show you a little code you can run in server-side JavaScript that can leverage the power of WS Proxy and the REST API to retrieve all the SQL activities and automations that are affecting a data extension. I've put a link to this code in the video description below. So the first thing we need to do is to copy the code from the link provided and create a new cloud page with a landing page type and paste our code onto that cloud page. One thing to be aware of is that our SSJS code contains the REST API and WS proxy calls. Now these calls will not render properly in the Cloud Page Preview screen, so don't be alarmed if you see an error. Once you publish this page, you can access it normally through your browser and it should render just fine. And all we need to make this code work is an API provisioned inside Marketing Cloud with the Automations Read permission scoped. To do this, we can make a new package in the Install Packages in Marketing Cloud and create a new server-to-server -server integration making sure that we tick the read option under automations. So now that we have our API provisioned, we can copy the client ID, client secret, and auth point, and paste them into our SSJS code. And since we're looking for SQL activities and automations that are targeting a data extension, we need to insert the name of that target data extension. And with our four config values set, we can press the schedule and publish button, again, ignoring the error and pressing publish. We can now copy the cloud page URL and enter it into our browser to see the results of our query. And there we go. For the data extension SFMC Fundamentals customers' names, we had one SQL query which was found on step one with the automation called C108 testing. Now if I have a look in my query activities, there is indeed just the one SQL activity that targets that data extension and it's also found in step one of that automation. Okay, that could have been first time luck, so let's try it again, only this time I'll make three more activities, two of which will modify that data extension and one will not. And I'll make two new automations which will contain these queries on various steps. And with these queries and automations saved, I'll go back into my browser and refresh the cloud page. And there we go. The original SQL query was found on a new automation as well as the existing one. One of our new SQL activities was found on step two and three of automations one and two. Another of our SQL activities was found on step one and two of automations one and two, which lines up perfectly with Automation Studio. So there you have it, a cool little piece of code that you can run to find out what SQL activities and automations are modifying your data extensions. I hope you found this code walkthrough useful. If you have, let me know in the comments below and don't forget to leave the video a like. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud videos.